I hereby summon all my imps. Hey everybody, it's Annabelle. Since I last made a review, there have been at least 10 cards that have came out, way more than 10. But um, I'm going to leave off where I left off, which is currently with Body Bagger. Body Bagger is a uh, 1 mana, 1 3 with, for Death Knights. That says, uh, Battle Cry, Gain of Corpse. So when you play this card, you're putting a corpse right into your corpse pile right off the bat. And then when this dies, of course you're adding a corpse to your corpse pile. It's a 1-3, one, 1-3s three, one, have always seen some sort of play. It's neutral, it's it's not neutral, it's um, uh, common. For Death Knights, it's undead by itself. It's going to see some play. It's, it's just a general filler card. For a one drop, it's it's going to see some play. So I'm going to give this a... Every 1-3 has seen some out of... has seen some sort of play. That's up for us as number 2. Which is the Chill Fallen Baron. Chill Fallen Burn is a 3 mana 2-2 two, two Death Knight card. Uh, which is just Battle Cry and Death Rattle draw a card. Draw is always a premium in any stat, any class draws a premium. This is a little bit expensive for a draw, but... Uh, it's going to add two bodies to your graveyard. It's going to draw you probably two cards. So it's a little expensive. It's basically a loot hoarder on steroids. So I'm going to give this a draw card out of a draw card. Next up for us is number three. For us, that's going to be the Malignant Horror. Malignant Horror is a 4 mana, 2 4 uh, Death Knight card. It has Reborn, and at the end of your turn, spend 5 corpses to summon a copy of this minion. The problem with this is, is, as far as I am aware, and until I can get confirmation any other ways, this is what I'm going with. The corpses in your graveyard have to be spent if they can be spent. It's not a choice. So, if at any point you have five corpses in your graveyard, you're going to summon another copy of this. And when you do that, you're going to limit how many corpses are in your pool. There's going to be times where you're not going to care that you're summing two of these. Um, because four mana two four, there's a lot better stuff you can do for that. And to even get 4 mana, 4, 8 is barely worth it, and that's to waste 5 corpses. Now, this is going to bring you 2 corpses back into your graveyard when this is all said and done. But you can basically play a 2 mana that can get you 2 corpses at this point in the game. And work on something like that instead. I just don't see at what point you want to play this stat one. So I'm going to give this a uh, makes corpses out of takes corpses. 
Next up for us is number four. Which for us is rune forging. Rune forging is a one mana a shadow spell for our deaf knights. That just says draw a weapon. Uh, spend a corpse to reduce its cost by one. One mana draw a a specific card. Spend a corpse to make that that weapon one cheaper. If you are playing weapons, you're playing this card. I'm not sure if there's enough weapons, even with all the weapons that have been revealed, to justify playing this card. But I also don't know how many slots are going to be dedicated to different things in Death Knights yet. Remember, if you're playing, let's just say, uh, three weapons. So if you're playing the normal 40 card deck and you're playing three weapons and assuming none of them are legendary. That's six slots for those weapons. And another two slots for this room forging. You're basically almost dedicating a third of your deck just to make this card work. I mean, it's not the worst idea, but you also have to know that there's going to be times where you're not going to get this card early game. There's going to be times where you draw this card and you've already burnt every single weapon in your deck. And there's going to be an to get this card when you don't have a corpse is such a problem. Because the only upside you get is when you have a corpse. So if you don't have a corpse, you're kind of I'm going to sit there and go, do I play this card? Do I worry about the fact that next turn I might draw my weapon and not get as much use out of this card? So I'm going to give this really good draw out of really deck dependent. Next up for us is number five. I wish I have to flip pages for something on. Number five for us is Corpse Bride. Corpse Bride is a five mana four four. Death Knight card again. This one's coming in the uh, Rise of Arthas in the Path of Arthas. This is going to be part of that mini set that you're going to get. If that's not actually like in this set. So this is basically like what you would have gotten had Death Knights existed and like Forged in the Barrens and stuff like that. So this is like right now, like if, if, if you had done uh, Castle Nafria and Death Knights had exist, this is basically what you would have gotten in my Castle Nafria. And it has spend eight corpses, summon a risen groom with stats equal to the amount spent. So it's a five mana four four, but if you have one corpse, summons a, a one one next to you. If you have eight minions in the, uh, your graveyard for whatever reason, then when you summon this, it summons a 4-4 four, four and an 8-8. Eight, eight. Um, that's interesting. You basically need four corpses for this to come and be even semi-useful. And 
it's going to be a corpse user, but it's just a big pile of stuff. On turn 5, you can basically summon a equivalent of a 12-12. There's stuff in rogues where you can get a 12-12 on like 5 or 5 to go through all these hoops. So, I mean, I like the reference, I like what it's trying to do. I'm just not sure that you need to jump through so many hoops. I'm going to give this a good card out of too many hoops. That's up for us is number six. Number six for us is Frostmourne. Most basically guessed upon known upon card that you could never uh, thought of. I think the second that uh, Death Knights were brought out, everybody was like, Frostmourne's gotta come out. It's a, it's basically almost the same equivalent of the card you used to get. Uh, five mana, five, five, three. That has Death Rattle Summon every minion uh, killed by this weapon. I'm also seeing a couple pictures where it's five mana, five, five. I mean, so I'm not sure if this is going to be a five mana, five, three, or a five mana, five, five. I'll, f I'll five attack, five defense, or five attack, uh, three durability. If it's 5 attack, 3 durability, this is actually a better card than if it's 5, five attack, 5 durability. So I'm not sure if they used the correct Frostmourne for this one. Uh, for attack, 5 durability, uh, you get the ability to really slam somebody in the face. That's 25 damage right there, with nothing else. The thing is, with only three durability, though, you're basically using this to do like three trades. And the thing is, is like Gorhal is currently in the game. You can run two Gorhals in Warrior, and I do not remember the last time that Gorhal ever was used. Unless it, you got off of some generated item, I'm not counting that. This is, like, not bad. But, are you going to waste a sword swing on a 3-3? I mean, at, the, at a certain point you're sitting there going, yeah. And at a certain point, you're sitting there going, ooh, I don't want to waste a sword attack on a 3-3. Three, three. So I'm going to give this a, I don't know what the durability is at this point, so watch, ought to watch out for this. Next up for us is number 7. Number 7 for us is the ever-famous anti-magic shield. Which is a 3 mana shadow uh, spell that costs 1 on holy. So 1 on holy rune. And what it does is it gives your minions plus 1 plus 1 and they can't be targeted by spells or ability. This one, if you can go wide, this one's going to make you cry at points. Because as weak, and I don't almost want to use the word weak, um, the, the tag of can't be targeted by spells or abilities seems at times. That's because you usually have it on one minion. And that one minion usually isn't the best minion in the world. There's going to be times where you can have a board, 
and you play this down and your opponent just sits there and goes, oh man. You know, I just can't do anything about this particular one. Hey, tricks. Next up for us is number eight. Number eight for us is Howling Blast. Howling Blast is a three mana Death Knight spell. That's Frost, that's fur one Frost also. Cries one Frost uh, gem. And it uh, deals three damage to an enemy and freezes it. And then deals one damage to all other enemies. So you can use this on a minion, you can use this on your opponent's face. No matter what, you're dealing one damage to everything on the board and you just could put where that three goes to, so it's basically the equivalent of like a swipe. And then you can just move it to the face, you can move it to a minion. If you got a minion that you don't want to hit you, this phrases it if you have a, a hero that you don't want to hit you, uh, this could hit this, you can just use this for the end. Three, three mana is basically the correct uh, mana for this, so I'm going to give this a uh, swipe minus one. Next up for us is number nine. Number nine for us is this guy who I'm not even going to try to pronounce. The one called Yar Jar Frostbreaker. And I almost say it sounds like Jar Jar. Um, this is a 1 mana, 1 2, gain plus 1 attack for each spell in your hand. Also requires 1 frost rune. The good thing about this and the bad thing about this is if you start with the normal hand size, it's 4 cards in your hand. So if you have that and for some reason this is one of your cards and the three other are frost spells, you can slam down on turn one a three, a four two. The problem with that is that all the other three cards in your hand are frost spells, which you may or may not be able to use. And you basically made a flame ample that just didn't deal two damage to you. Now, as nasty as a flame imp is at times, this is getting like one swing in. If you get to the point where you have nine frost spells in your hand and you throw this down, and it comes out as a 10 2, nobody's gonna care. There's going to be times where these drop as 1-2s, there's going to be times where this drops as 2-2s. Two it's going to be hard to get this even off the flame of stats. So I'm going to give this, seems powerful, out of flame of. I believe that brings us to number 9. Which I have to flip pages for. And number nine for us is going to be Remorseless Winter. Remorseless Winter is a four mana frost spell that requires a frost rune that deals two damage to all enemy minions and face, so this does near the minions and the face. And then it uh, draws one single card. You're going to play this if you play Frost, if you put a Frost Rune in your deck, you're going to throw it in. If for nothing else, then you just draw a card. 
I'm gonna give this a uh, draw a card, then deal two. And the last crush for us on this particular set is going to be Bonebreaker. Bonebreaker is a 1 mana 2-2 two -two weapon for Death Knights that has after your hero attacks a minion, deal 2 damage to the enemy hero. This is a early game uh, weenie uh, killer. The number of times that you're going to take out a flame up with this is, or the number of times that you're going to take out a wisp or something else where you just don't care that you're taking the damage is just going to happen. So I'm going to give this a good early out of bad late. Those were the 10 cards that got uh, released since the last time. And I did this, so thank you all so much for watching. And as always, remember, play for fun. I'm doing